Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the books that I have read so far in July. So filming today, it is July 17th, a little bit after halfway. Um, so I've, I, I stopped my mid-month update at the 15th. So I've read books these past two days, but we're just going to be talking about the ones that I've read uh, from the 1st to the 15th. I ended up reading 13 books and DNFing two of them, so let's get started. The first book that I ended up reading in July is Muscles and Monsters by Ashley Bennett. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this one. So this is the romance between Tegan and Atlas. Tegan is a human woman and Atlas is a monster creature. They now like live in society together, like cohabitate like monsters and humans, but it's not necessarily common for them to pair up and like get together if that makes sense. So Tegan ends up meeting Atlas one day because her assistant called out sick from work and she works at a bakery, she's a baker, and she's needing to carry one of the wedding cakes she's made. And she ends up accidentally dropping one of the tears while she's trying to walk into the truck. Um, and it plops right in front of Atlas's gym. And he helps her clean up the cake and everything and they become infatuated with each other right when they see each other. So after the whole meet cute moment, Atlas tells her like, hey, if you ever need help carrying a cake, call me over, I'll definitely help you lift one. And then she decides like, oh, she wants to get to know Atlas more. And the only excuse that she can think of is to join his gym. And so she's like, okay, well, I wanna also learn how to carry my own cake. So can you help me get stronger? They get in a lot of forced proximity situations um, that are very angsty. <laughs> Um, that he has to help her at like the gym and stuff and they're very close together and they cannot hold off their desire whatsoever. These two are so stinking cute. I loved this. If you want a sweet but hot monster romance, this is definitely one you should pick up. It was so fun. I can't wait to read the rest of the books in the series. I'm so excited. Um, for the tropes in here, you have baking, a cinnamon roll hero, cute but hot. Uh, Faded Mates. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There is a mating bite. I love those. Uh, an amazing meet cute moment, plus size representation, and of course monsters. I ended up giving this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars just because it did go a little bit too fast for my taste. I wanted more of it and I just didn't get that full five star feeling for me, but I did, did, did love this one. I then read Sugar Daddies by Jade West from a recommendation from Samantha from Books with Samantha, of course. She loves this one and so I just had to pick it up. It was on my library for me to listen to, so I was like, why not? So this is about our heroine. I can't remember their names at the moment, um, but she is needing some money for a certain reason. And so she decides to go on this sugar daddy website and there she meets our two heroes. So I think his name is Carl and the other one's name is, I can't remember, but they're very similar names. And so like, I always kept confusing them. And so that was one thing that I was like confused about was their names and who was who, honestly, because the names were so similar to me. I think it was Brian. Possibly Carl and Brian give me like such similar vibes. <laughs> they are in a relationship, these two men, and they're looking for a third person to enter their relationship and there comes our heroine. That's all I really wanna say because the rest could be like spoilery. I gave this book four stars. I'm leaning more towards 3.5. I had a very fun time with this. I love the steaminess, the fun times that these characters had together. I just honestly felt like this book dragged on way too long. It's way too long for my taste. Um, but again, that's just me. And um, I felt like this would probably do better as a shorter novella length book. But again, that's just my taste. For tropes in here, you have a couple that has three or more people. It's an age gap romance because Carl is way older than the heroine in this situation. There's books with pets in them. Our heroine is a big horse girl. Um, she has a horse that she adores so i did like that part of the book because you don't normally see that in romances and it was very steamy there's also like a workplace romance aspect in here too um but i don't want to say what it is because i was like kind of like a little bit surprised by it so i'll leave that for you to read yeah i ended up giving this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars and next i have everything for you by chloe lease the fifth book in the bergman brothers series this is a new favorite of mine and that is absolutely no surprise. So this is the romance between Oliver and Gavin. Gavin is a older soccer player um, and he is experiencing quite a lot of chronic pain. He has been captain of this soccer team for quite a long time 
And then in comes Oliver, who is one of the Bergman brothers. And he is kind of new to the team a little bit. And the coach has tasked Oliver and Gavin to now be co-captains because she thinks that they will be amazing to work together. But there's kind of like an animosity between the two, like Oliver and Gavin. Oliver has always looked up to Gavin because he was a famous soccer star when he was younger. There is an age gap here. Um, and so he's always looked up to him. But when he finally meets Gavin, that kind of like, superstar mindset about him is kind of shattered because Gavin isn't the nicest to him. He's kind of a big grump. And the reason why Gavin is a big grump is because he's very jealous of Oliver. Oliver is young, just starting his career, isn't experiencing excruciating pain in his body every day because of the sport that he loves. And so he's kind of jealous of him. And so he comes off as being very grumpy. But Oliver is a big sunshine character and he won't let Gavin's grumpiness get to him. And so he kind of like decides to try to get on Gavin's good side, but it's getting very difficult. Um, and then the two of them realize that they are very, very attracted to one another. And it goes from there. This was really cute, okay? I loved Gavin and Oliver. I love their relationship. I love their dynamic in here. The caretaking scene in here was amazing as well. One of my favorite scenes ever, honestly, that I've ever read about in a book is there's a scene where Gavin is very hurt. He is experiencing a lot of chronic pain and Oliver comes over to take care of him and he can't even like get in the shower and stand in the shower on his own like he can't and so oliver has a shower chair at home that he that he keeps at home just in case some of his family members need it because his other family has either disabilities or chronic illnesses to where they have to use shower chairs as well and so he never wants them to feel like that they can't be at home in his home so he's always kept a shower chair at his home also they're next door neighbors that's why i'm saying he takes the shower chair from his home too Gavin's home is because they're next door and so Oliver brings the shower chair over and he helps him like take a shower and some people might be like how is that your favorite part of the book it's because I use a shower chair so like that whole scene was honestly really special to me I know that's weird to say but it was I loved it I really connected to both characters in here because of Gavin's chronic pain but also Oliver Oliver and his anxiety I really related to that um and so there's also a caretaking scene where Oliver has a panic attack and Gavin is there for him to lean on. So I just loved that part. I loved all of this book so much. For tropes in here, you have age gap, caretaking, like I just talked about those two scenes, uh, childhood crush, grumpy sunshine, hate to love, it's an LGBTQ plus romance. There is meddlesome family members in here. It's a part of a sibling series. This is a soccer romance and it is a sports romance. I of course gave this book a five out of five stars. I then read a short novella. I'm trying to read all of Tessa Dara's backlist. And so one of the little novellas, sh very short stories that I haven't read yet is When a Scott Ties the Knot, like a bonus epilogue from it. Um, where is When the Scott Ties the Knot? This one. Oops. This one, there was like a little bonus epilogue on her website that she wrote just for fun. Um, and so I decided to read that and it was cute. It um, was about, sorry, I'm trying to get this book back in. It takes place after this book and it was just cute. It like talks about like a lot of the same characters in the book. It's been a while since I read that one. So I don't remember all those characters, but it was a really cute story. I just gave it 3.5 stars. I then did my reread of Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas for the SJM along. I am a little behind on this read along. I know a lot of people read it last month, I think, um, but this is me just now getting around to it. I'm a, I, I, I know I'm slow with that, um, but this is book four, a part of the Throne of Glass series. If you have not read this series yet, and I'm talking to many of my friends <laughs> that I know have read Akatar but haven't read this series, please get on it because the heroine of this series is one of my favorite, favorite characters ever, honestly. And her romance is amazing, I love her. This is the book where like my romance love comes in in this series, like this is where it starts. And then the next book, Empire of Storms, well technically not the next book because Tower of Dawn's the next book. But anyway, the next book surrounding her is where the romance really takes off. And I'm just like, I'm, I wanna reread it so badly right now, but I'm going to go back and listen to the Akatar books because that's the next uh, 
one in our lineup. If you didn't know, the SJM Along is like a year long or longer read along that Jen from the Book Refuge put together with a bunch of other booktubers um, where we're reading Sarah G. Mass's books in publication order, like for the anticipation of her next release next year. So um, yeah, I love this one you need to get to it if you haven't yet because it is so good the first couple books are like meant once you hit air of fire you're gonna be obsessed okay and of course this is five stars obviously <laughs> i then read the midnight bride by katie wild this is the technically next book in the deadlands series so like the first book was the mid the mid the male the midwinter mail order bride that title is a tongue twister. <laughs> so the midwinter mail order bride was book one. I loved that one. It's one of my favorite fantasy romances. And so this like takes place in the same world. I did not love this one, sadly. Um, I picked this one up because I realized like, oh, I really have liked Katie Wilde's books. I haven't disliked really any of them. And I've been wanting to find like more novella writers that I could pick up on a whim. And so I forgot about Katie Wilde. One day I remembered her and I was like, oh, I need to read her books. Oh my gosh, please do not bark anymore. Ollie, shh. <laughs> so this book was basically like all over the place, okay? You have our heroine in here who's trying to complete this task to fetch this chalice for this evil king because the evil king has taken her family hostage. And so a bunch of these people she's the only woman they're all men going to find this chalice for different reasons and so hers is because he's kidnapped her entire family and has threatened to kill him um and it's like a year over year long track to find and get this chalice and so she's like the last person in place in this race except for the hero who's kind of like been the menace on her shoulder this entire time following her every step of the way he like tells her like man you're so slow you're last place can you believe it she's like i'm not last place you're behind me you're you're last place what are you talking about and so like i did like their banter in here it's just like the pacing and the world building was not there for me with this fantasy romance novella um so i ended up giving it three stars because it was like okay but it really let me down compared to book one in this series because i just loved it so much then is it dnf i dnf'd the battle prince's prize bride by nikki clark um, I was just bored. Like I DNF'd it at like 30%. I got off of Kindle Unlimited. It was an alien romance on my alien romance Kindle Unlimited shelf. Uh, I sometimes just like go search on Amazon Kindle Unlimited and just like add books to certain shelves on my Amazon or lists. And so this was on there. It was short. So I was like, why not? I was just bored. It's about like an alien king trying to, gladiator king trying to win a bride and like them hooking up. And I was bored. So I DNF'd it. Next, I read A Reckless Match by Kate Bateman. Kate Bateman is becoming one of my new favorite authors. I've been loving her books. So this is her first book in the Ruthless Rivals series. Um, I think book two is out already too, um, but I haven't gotten to that one yet. So uh, this was an amazing rivaling families romance. I love rivaling families because I'm a big Romeo Juliet lover, loved that. And so any rivaling family romances are like catnip to me. I love them. So the Montgomery's and the Davies have been kind of like family feuding for years. No one really knows the exact reason why they've been feuding for all this time, but they have. And so they've been fighting over this specific piece of land. And so like the ruler of the land, I don't know if it's like a king or whatever, has basically been fed up with them fighting or whatever. So they have claimed that the land is a joint ownership if once a year one representative from each family comes and shakes hand on this specific day and then it'll like be adjoined land whatever but if someone one year does not come one of the families does not come to shake hands with the other the family who did show up automatically gets that piece of land for forever so madeline in here is the heroine from the montgomery family who's been chosen to shake hands this year and she has been arrivals with griff davis for forever and so griff is the one who comes to shake hands with her and they haven't spoken in quite a long time since they were children um and they kind of get into some adventureness together have to do some things together that forces them to talk to each other and spend time together and possibly fall in love this was a very sweet historical a great enemies to lovers romance i loved like the rivaling familyness in here like i just said and i can't wait to read other books in the series because it's going to be even more rivaling familyness um 
but this wasn't my favorite thing ever, honestly. Um, I was very bored by their exploring scenes. They're exploring certain land and areas. Like that is not <laughs> like, I don't really want to read about you staking out somebody stealing something or you traveling through caves. Like that's, that's not very exciting to me, honestly. Um, and I'm more of a character driven reader anyway. And I feel like Kate Bateman is also very plot heavy with her books and like always needs there to be a little something something going on besides the romance and like that's just not my taste and I totally get that and I respect it and there's nothing wrong with it that's just my taste um so that's why I gave this book four stars for tropes in here um it's obviously forbidden hates love it's a historical romance there is a rivaling families there's a scarred character um the heroine in here was struck by lightning before and so she has scars all over her body which didn't know you could survive being struck by lightning, but this heroine did. So a couple of days ago, I actually ended my membership with Audible because I just felt like I wasn't getting enough out of the service. And so um, once it hits a certain date in July, so I can meet out my month long that I've already paid for, I will no longer have access to Audible or their plus catalog because I really wanted to check out any play. And so that's what I have right now. And so I was like, okay, before my membership ends, I'm gonna listen to a few books on Audible Plus that I actually want to listen to. So the next two books are there. So first is Royally Remembered by Emma Chase. This is a very short novella, book number 4.6, a part of the Royally series. All of the books are right there, uh, except for the 4.5 novella. I don't have that one. Um, but basically this is a collection of short stories that you should read after you've read every single book in this series. Like it, you will not get the same feelings out of this book if you don't read all the other ones um, because some of them do take place before the series, but you won't get the character development and prior knowledge you should have unless you read the other books in the series that take place after these. So um, I'm not really gonna talk about this too much because uh, I, like some of them are just like spoilery, you know? So every single one of these stories in here <laughs> is emotional and or sad. So be aware of that. Um, there's a trigger warning in here for death of a loved one. I'm trying to get like more into like mentioning quotes that I love from books because I know that people read and see certain quotes from books and it sparks them to want to read the book. So let's see. This one was probably my favorite one. It says, I will never be lost. You will be with me always. The vows were wrong. Death can have your body, but your soul will stay with me. I swear it. So yeah, again, read the other books in the series before you get to this one though. I gave this book a four to five stars. The next book that I decided to pick up off of Audible Plus was Forever Wild, which is book number 2.5, a part of the Wild series. Um, this one is kind of like, I think the last book about Kala and Jonah. This was them during like the holiday season in Alaska. And this was really cute and everyone coming together in this book was really cute as well. Um, and yeah, I gave it four stars. It's on Audible Plus, it's a Christmas novella um, and you could probably read it during the winter time. So um, if you haven't read the other books in the series though, you're not gonna understand this one at all. So please read book one and book two before you get to this. I then read Bad for the Boss by Talia Hibbert. I'm trying to read all of her backlist. So this is the first book in the Just For Him series and any play has all of the books in the series on audio. So I was like, Perfect. So this one is about Jennifer and Theo. So Jennifer just started this job at this new company um, and she is so proud of this new job and doesn't want to lose it whatsoever. She ends up sending the wrong email to her boss's boss essentially. So there's this creepy guy around the office who keeps hitting on Jennifer and so she makes like a funny email to her friend who um has a similar last name as her boss's boss and so she's basically joking to her friend like when will this guy stop harassing me you know and so then she sends it to the wrong person and she doesn't realize she messed up until she gets an email back from her boss's boss being like oh what is going on you're being harassed what and she's like responding like oh my gosh no it's just a, like a thing going on like i can totally handle it you're fine i'm so sorry i accidentally sent this email to you and so then he calls her up to his office to try and figure out who this guy is and then uh, things get very insta-lovey, insta lusty towards one another. This was really cute and sweet romance, but this was a little bit too insta-lovey for my taste. Um, but again, that's just me. <laughs> so you might like this one more than me. Um, for a trip in here, it was an age gap, a workplace romance, plus size rep, and there was insta-love. I gave this book a three out of five stars. I hope the other books in the series vibe better for me. I then read Painted Scars by 
Neva, I don't know how to say her name, I'm so sorry. Neva Altaj, Altaj, oh, I'm probably butchering that. Um, but this is a mafia romance. I got this recommendation from Maraid. I'll link her down below. Um, but I heard her talk about this book and she was like, oh yeah, this is a mafia romance where like the mafia boss is a wheelchair user. And I was like, sign me up immediately. <laughs> Disability rep and mafia? Yes, this one's about Nina and Roman. And so Roman <laughs> is this mafia boss who got in an accident that left him with horrible leg pain, like horrible, like his leg, he basically can't use it. And so he's been using a bunch of mobility aids to help him get around. He has a wheelchair, he has crutches. And then his main goal, he really wants to end up working like with a physical therapist to get to a point where he can use a cane. And so he's really insistent on finding the person who did this to him, like forced this accident onto him because this wasn't an accident. Someone made like the car crash that he was in happen. He needs a temporary wife for some reason, you read about in the book why, um, he needs a temporary wife to fill out his plan. He finds out that this one guy, this guy owes him a debt and is in be big doo-doo with him. So he's like, okay, well, I'm gonna blackmail you. And um, you're gonna give me your daughter to be my wife for six months. And so Nina is said woman who is going to be his wife for six months. And so they spend almost every second of the day together um, for the next six months to try and pretend that they're married. And then also put together this plan to try and find the guy who targeted Roman. So, um, but once they, spend all this time together, the facade obviously becomes something way more. If you want a good light mafia romance, this is definitely one you should pick up. Um, it doesn't go too heavy into the mafia. Um, it does get a little bit gory and, and, and like bloody sometimes, but that's what you would expect from a mafia romance, I wanna say. Uh, but this is definitely on the lighter side. I loved Nina and Roman and their relationship. I really loved the slow progression that you got to see about them fall. Like you get to, like you get to see the slow progression of them falling in love. Like that's my thing that I love in romances. Like sometimes like romances where just like the switch is flipped and they're like suddenly in love with somebody. Like those aren't my types of romances. I love these slow progression where you get to see these little moments and little instances where you get to see them like change their viewpoint about somebody and slowly start to fall in love with them. I felt like that was in here and I loved that. I also really loved Roman because of his use of mobility aids um, because I really related to him about that. I used a mobility aid. And so just like some of the thoughts that he had about like self-deprecating thoughts that he had at first about everything, just like, oh, I felt that, I relate to that. Um, and then he finally becomes confident in how he moves. And so I love that journey he goes on. The only issue that I had with this book, this was so on track to a five star, uh, was the third act breakup and everything after that was just like, oh no. It was like way too rushed for me. And it was kind of out of character for some of the characters in the book. Like, like I felt like everything they had been working up to kind of got like thrown out the window and it was kind of out of character. And so the third act breakup and, and after that wasn't my favorite thing ever. And that was more of like a three star section of the book. And so from a five star read to a three star read is a four star read in my brain. I cannot wait for the next book though. It comes out in a couple weeks at the end of July. I'm so excited because it's like, um, an it's like a, like marriage, like a arranged marriage, marriage of convenience thing where they're trying to put together an alliance between the Bratva and the Italian mafia. And so like the most beautiful woman in the Italian mafia is forced to marry the most brutal scarred looking one from the Bratva one. And so I'm, I'm excited for that one. Um, and so trick warning in this one though, you have torture, blood, self-deprecating thoughts about one's disability and blackmail. I, I put some memorable quotes in here. <laughs> Um, I'll just pick out, a f oh, I want to read all of them. Okay, so one says, Roman says to Nina, he goes, you're a little nuts, you know that, right? And she goes, life's crazy, you gotta embrace it. And then another one, <laughs> Roman says, put your hands on my wife and you are losing them. Yes. Um, another one goes, I don't care what we agreed, you are mine now and I'm not letting you go ever. And the last one, I love you so much, I would burn the effing world for you. 
There's uh, some quotes that'll get you interested. Uh, tropes in here, alpha hero, an artistic character, Nina paints. Um, you have a caretaking scene, Nina gets sick at one point. Um, a damaged hero, there's a height difference. Um, when Roman stands, Nina has PTSD with a man. Um, I should also put that in my trigger warning too, sorry. PTSD when it comes to sexual assault from another person. So Nina was sexually assaulted by a man who was way taller than her. And so she sometimes gets very panicky whenever she sees a man or is in front of a man that's way taller than her. Um, and so Roman at that point, when he stands on his crutches is taller than Nina. So they have to work through some things. Um, it's on Kindle Unlimited. It's a mafia romance. It's a marriage of convenience. There was disability representation. There is a tattooed hero and a hero who says, who did this to you? So love that. Next is a book that I DNF'd and I'm very sad. I DNF'd Sin and Cider by Kimberly Reese, which is so upsetting because I love Kimberly Reese when she wrote Nerdgasm. Like y'all know, I love that book. I shout about it from the rooftops. I love that book so much. I think this was her first book, Sin Insider, and I had to DNF it. I might come back to it later on in life, who knows, but it just was like not doing it for me. Lawson in here basically is our heroine's, so our heroine has a brother, okay? And Lawson is her brother's best friend, okay? So it's a best friend's brother romance. Um, so no, it's a brother's best friend romance, <laughs> sorry. And so the heroine has always had this huge crush on Lawson and he has never thought of her that way ever um and then one day she comes back home moves back home to their very small town and she's been in chicago for her quite a few years she is at this farmer's market buying this spying something and lawson ends up seeing the back of her back of this woman and he's like oh my gosh i'm very attracted to the back of this woman she looks like my type of woman she's got curves she's got her hair done like she looks like my type of woman but she walks off before he can figure out who she is and talk to her sorry i have to rant about this book for a second she's like having breakfast with her family she obviously has no makeup on she's in her pjs like hair up in a bun and her brother and lawson come over and he's just like hey what's up doesn't recognize her at all and literally is not attracted to her whatsoever and they have to work together to restore the barn on her parents property and he even like says at one point in like his inner monologue like man i wish she had more curves on her because i would like her way more if she did um but sadly i feel no attraction to her whatsoever and i'm just like okay and then he finally sees her one day with her hair done with makeup on with like skin tight clothes on and immediately he's like oh, you're the girl of my dreams blah blah, blah. so it just made me hate him <laughs> like i can't stand men or people in general honestly who only care about somebody because they look attractive to them like you've known this girl your entire life and you only become attracted to her because she's wearing makeup and has her hair done and then there's one scene that was like kind of like a cherry on top to make me like click off the book honestly the first time they do anything together is like him dropping her off at her parents house because she's staying with her parents and they do stuff like do stuff on her parents porch outside on the porch on our parents porch no thanks no the whole time i was like no thank you <laughs> so i am very upset that that this is like a book that i'm dnfing because i love nergasm so much but like i can't believe kimberly reese wrote sweet amazing theo from nergasm but it's also written lawson who i hate so i didn't finish it i was so fed up with this book, with this hero. I then read the next book in the Interstellar Bride Program series. Um, this is book number 14 called Claimed by the Vikings. Not my favorite, honestly. Um, I'm not really a fan of her romances that are basically like reverse harem where there's one woman and multiple men only wanting the heroine. I am not a fan of reverse harems. I don't really care for them. I want everyone to be together, like a poly situation. And Grace Goodwin is not doing that in her books and so that's why i haven't been reading a lot of them is because a lot of them like are not enjoyable to me because they're the reverse harem ones and that's just not my favorite thing ever like i don't like them and that's basically what this was this is an alien reverse harem 
and I don't remember anything else from it because I don't really care. So I gave this one a three star, leaning more towards 2.5. And the last book that I ended up reading in the first half of July is The Chasing of Eleanor Vane. I read this in the Duke I'd Like to F anthology. It's like an anthology of multiple authors, one of which is Sierra Simone. Um, and I'm currently reading the second one in this anthology. This is a historical romance novella that I really enjoyed. So Eleanor is the heroine, okay? And Ajax is the hero. However, Eleanor is betrothed to Ajax's nephew. At the moment that they see each other, they are immediately infatuated and want the other person. But then Eleanor's like in this bind because she's betrothed to his nephew and like does not want to be in the situation. She doesn't and no one's really taking her thoughts into consideration. So she thinks the only solution is to run away. She's like, I'll never have Ajax and I don't want to be in this marriage to his nephew where I'm gonna have to see this man for the rest of my life that I am basically in love with. And I can't have him because I'm gonna marry his nephew. And so she runs away and then Ajax like figures that out and goes and finds her. This was a really fun historical. I loved it. It was very hot, hot, hot. Um, the forbiddenness to it was extra spice on top of the hotness, you know? Um, and I really loved how passionate these two were with one another. Um, a memorable quote in here, we have, uh, she wanted to consume him. She wanted him to consume her. I really loved this by Sierra Simone. I thought it was great. Um, I think this takes place in kind of like her same world as um, her Jane is it a Jane Eyre retelling? I think it is. I don't know. It's one of her other historical books that I haven't read yet. Um, but I'm really looking forward to reading that one. For Tropes in Eyre, you have an age gap. He's way older than her. Um, it's a historical romance. I would say that it's a standalone historical. Um, Insta love. It's a novella. The hero is a widower. Um, and it is obviously forbidden because she's betrothed to his nephew. So I really enjoyed this one and gave it a four to five stars. So there you have it. Those are all the books that I've read so far in the beginning of July. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any yellow emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. 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 Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.